Good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity or the birth of John the Baptist. And in this Mass, we continue to remember the intentions of all our fathers as we are doing a novena. But also in a very special way, we pray for our uh, first uh, responders and uh, frontliners. We pray for those who have fallen ill or those who have died because of this uh, pandemic. We pray for their souls. We pray for their healing. We pray for their families as well. A man was sent from God whose name was John. He came to testify to the light to prepare a people fit for the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we are gathered today to celebrate the birth of John the Baptist, we call to mind our sins and failures. We ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness, especially uh, in those times that we did not respect life from uh, its first moment of conception to its uh, natural death. We ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raise up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him, and I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O oh Lord, you have probed me, you know me, you know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. My soul also you knew full well. 
nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth, I praise you for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king, of him God testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You child will be, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise a child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, we commemorate the birth of John the Baptist, the great forerunner of Christ. Beside, uh, besides Jesus and Mary, John the Baptist is, only the person, is the only person in our liturgical calendar whose birthday is also a liturgical feast day. And of course, we know the reason why. His birth proclaims the arrival of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We are also familiar with the striking details surrounding his birth. His mother, Elizabeth, was an older woman and considered to be barren. His father, Zechariah, also advanced in years, was mysteriously muted during the, the entire nine months of Elizabeth's pregnancy. We also know from earlier, uh, from earlier in Luke's gospel that Zechariah was told by the angel Gabriel that his wife would bear a son, but he did not believe him. And because of this, his voice was taken away. Behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things come to pass, because you did not believe my words sent said the angel sent by God. So John's birth was of special interest to the couple's neighbors and relatives. But eight days after, 
when all gathered for the circumcision and, na and naming of the child, which we read in our gospel episode today, we find two more striking details. First, the baby is named John and not Zechariah, but John, which means the Lord is gracious or God's gift. This is very striking because from the moment of his birth, John already begins his work. He begins his work of opening people's eyes and hearts to the graciousness of God. He begins to make people think and reflect that a child is always a gift from God. I believe, my friends, this is an important lesson to emphasize today. This lesson of seeing a child and a child's life as a gift from God. When a child is sometimes seen as a burden, the story of John reminds us, no, a child is always a gift. When a child is abandoned or maltreated, the story of the birth of John reminds us, no, what you do to a child, you do it to God precisely because a child is a gift from God. When a child is smuggled, molested, or even killed, the story of John reminds us, no, a child is meant to be treasured and cherished precisely because every child is a gift from God. Our Catechism 2270 says it so fittingly, human life must be respected and protected absolutely from the moment of conception. From the first moment of his existence, a human being must be recognized as having the rights of a person, among which is the inviolable right of every innocent being to life. Secondly, we find it striking that once Zechariah writes, John is his name, his tongue is freed and he speaks blessing God. Zechariah is led to praise God, to share his joy to the people, to the community, and to proclaim his gratitude to the Lord. How fitting this lesson is to all of us, especially to parents. Are we led to thank God for we are given the gift of a child? Are we led in our praise of God? Or are we vocal in our praise of God when God shows his graciousness to us through the gift of a child? Are we led to come to church to praise God, share that joy to the community of believers? Sunday is that fitting time for parents to bring their children and present them before God. Every Sunday when families come to church, such is the fitting time to look at your children and say, these are God's gifts to me. The Lord is gracious to me for giving me the gifts of these wonderful children. Thanks belong to God. Praise be to God always. Amen. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the birth of St. John the Baptist, we praise Jesus Christ through whom John was sanctified. We pray that the joy of St. John's birth may echo throughout the church today as a grace of Christian joy for all who draw close to Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for every child conceived that's surrounded by love, their right to life and to faith will be respected by all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for older women expecting a baby, that joy and love will surround them and their child in their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all communities and parishes whose patronage is under St. John, that they may continue to play a significant role in bringing peace throughout the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord all our prayers and petitions. We pray for our loved ones, families, and friends. We pray for those who have asked us that we pray for them and for their intentions. We pray especially for the recently deceased members of our families in our communities. Lord our God, you knit each one of us wonderfully together in our mother's wombs. We thank you for the blessing of our being and pray that we may always respect and reverence the life you have given us, made even more wondrous in baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine. We offer you for the divine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may you be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leaped for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our Coadjutor our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
through the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will visit us. Let us pray. Having feasted at the, ban at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us in this Eucharistic celebration. Please be reminded of uh, the adjustments that we have made since we reopened our church for uh, public masses and um, services. Our new office times are, uh, are Mondays, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have an extended office uh, hours from 8.30 in the morning up to 7 o'clock in the evening to accommodate those who are coming back from work. And uh, secondly, please be reminded of our confession times. They are on Tuesdays and Thursdays beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning here in the church. So please be guided accordingly. Please check our website regularly from time to time so that you may be updated with uh, the changes or developments that we make uh, as we move forward. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Now go. Respect life. Thanks be to God.